Good morning. Thank you for coming, all of you. You're going to be so excited about what you find out today. Uh, I'm Mary Tharp. I'm chair of the Garden Discovery Series for the Botanic Garden Foundation. And we put on the series every second Saturday of the month. And today we have Kevin Langley with us. He is the outreach coordinator with the Capital Area Bee Association, or CABA, which is the little sticker that you have that you got when you came in. And I have to be careful what I'm touching back here. You can see all the live bees, so it's going to be really exciting. Uh, Kevin has been with the CABA organization. He's on the board of directors, has been there for a long time. And this is his fun job. This is what he really loves to do, uh, community outreach, teach people about honeybees, preserve and sustain the honeybees. They're so important to us, as Kevin will tell you as we go through the program. So we really thank you so much for coming, and I'm not going to take any more of his times because he has a lot to show you. Kevin? Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? I have a quick question. How many of you have pets at home? What do you have at home? What do you have? A dog? What do you have? Three cats and three dogs. A dog? What if I told you I had 50 million pets at home? Bees. And I brought some of them this morning. I pulled this from one of my colonies this morning, so I thought I'd share some, some bees and some pets with you, okay? We're here to learn about bees. How many of you are scared of bees? A handful of you? How many of you have been stung by a bee? Quite a few of you. Let me ask somebody what they were doing when they got stung by a bee. Anybody want to share? The lady in the back? Okay, you're climbing a ladder. What were you doing over there? You're swinging on your swing? Normally bees don't sting unless they're defending the colony. Unless you're messing with them, stepping on them, or squeezing them, they're not going to hurt you. Because the only reason why they sting is to defend the colony. So imagine if one of your friends came up and hit your little brother and sister. Wouldn't you kind of try to defend them? Yep, bees do the same thing. So as long as we don't mess with the bees, they generally won't mess with us. So that's one important thing. They're, excuse me, they're very different from wasps and other stinging creatures. They're very, actually very gentle. So, I told you I had pets at my house. Who wants to see some of my pets? We're seeing some of them live. I love photography. We're, we're doing some video and photography here today. And I have some really cool pictures of my pets at home. So I thought I'd share some photos with you. And then, after we share some photos, we're actually going to go out in the garden, the beautiful garden here at the library, and look for bees on the plants. Because there's a garden, and Kevin and Mary and... and um, so many people have spent so much time putting together a pollinator garden. We thought it would be important if you wanted to help the bees, you can plant some of the plants that's on the list. Everybody was given the sheet on the way in, okay? So make sure when you leave, you walk out with the sheet, because this is actually a treasure map today. We're going to go on a little scavenger hunt, and we're going to actually go with one of my favorite bees, and she's going to show us where the bees are on the flowers. Sound like a plan? Sound like fun? And then at the end, if we can cooperate and communicate effectively, we're going to do a little honey tasting at the end. So think of this as we're in the hive right now, and my favorite bee is going to come show us where all the nectar is. We're going to go look at the nectar, nectar on the plants, and then at the end, in about 45 minutes, we'll do a little honey tasting. Anybody want to taste some honey? Good? All right, excellent. So make sure you take this with you and you take all these home. Yes, ma'am. Um, not the same family. We'll talk about that in a second. But they're flying insects, of course. Right? All right? Okay. Let's move on. Everybody's seen bees flying, right? And photographs of bees. Okay? But look how beautiful this girl is right here. She's a female bee. And what is she doing? Yes. Yeah. That's right. What she's doing is she's flying to the flower, and you see all the pollen on the flower? See how beautiful that yellow pollen is? You notice it's all over her? You notice that she's hairy? 
right? So what bees do is they stick their faces in the flower and they gather the nectar, but they also get the pollen all over their body and they groom themselves. And you notice what's on her legs right there. You see those big yellow saddlebags, essentially? Think of those as book bags. She's grooming herself with all this pollen and she's sticking it together and she's putting it on her legs and that's how she brings it back to the colony. So when we're out there in the garden, when you see a bee, look on their back legs and you can see some yellow pollen, you can see some orange pollen, sometimes some white pollen. Has anybody ever seen pollen on a bee's leg? You have? Good. All right, so I want you to pay attention. They're doing two really important things. They're gathering the nectar and they're gathering the pollen. Oops, went the wrong way. Oop. Okay. I love this photograph because this is one of my guard bees. This is one of my colonies, and this bee is sitting on the front porch. Think of it as the front porch of your house. And you notice the expression on her face? You see how she's standing up on her back legs and her hands are in the air because I'm coming in the front and I'm looking at her and she's checking me out. So I want you to notice that bees have different personalities and they have different expressions and they communicate non-verbally. What's that? She does look funny, doesn't she? She looks like she's like excited, right? That's right. Yep. And you know, bees actually do a dance. And my favorite bee is going to do a bee dance later on. So if we're lucky, all right? Okay. It's kind of hard to see there, but that's actually a queen that emerged from one of my incubators at my house. And I'm feeding that queen a little bit of honey in my finger. So she just newly emerged and I'm basically bottle feeding her after she emerged. Isn't that cool? You got a question? What's that? I can't hear you. Oh, that's right. Yes, that's right. Only the female bees sting. That's smart. Where'd you learn that? Pretty good. All right. All right. So this is one of my bees that I actually on some comb. And I thought it'd be interesting because when I said that the bees are gathering the nectar, I thought I'd show you how they actually gather the nectar. That's, the, that's her tongue, or proboscis, and it's a little video. Watch what she's doing. See how she's licking up the honey? Isn't that cool? Who's seen that before? Nobody? Good, we learned something today. She brings it into her honey stomach, and then she flies to the colony, and then she transfers it to another bee, and then that bee will put it in the comb. And this is what you're looking at here after it's been stored. So what, I'm not a scientist, but everybody knows what sugar is, right? Table sugar, sugar is a, sugar is a complex, or sucrose is a complex sugar. When the bees gather the nectar, it's a complex sugar, and they mix it with their enzymes and some glands in their, in their throats, and it breaks it into two simple sugars, glucose and fructose, and then they dry it out. So what you're looking at here is nectar that's being converted into honey. It's being converted into simple sugars, and they're drying it out to be able to store it. Good? Isn't that cool? All right. Remember I said how bees have hair all over their bodies? They actually have hairs on their eyes. So that's actually a bee eye. And I thought it was kind of neat to look at the hair on the bee's eyes because when she has her face in the flower, gathering the nectar, her face is all over the pollen and it's a very efficient collector of pollen. So she's got hair all over herself and her, her arms have little rakes on it and she groom, constantly grooming herself. You know, I know your mom and dads tell you to comb your hair all the time. Well, the bees do it constantly because they're constantly grooming all the pollen out of it and they're scraping it off and putting it on their legs. All right. That's actually the bee tongue. Remember, you, I saw the photograph earlier. Look how it's almost like a cotton swab. Neat, huh? And I took a photograph of that for you guys because that's actually the bee foot. Because you know how bees walk up things? I was thinking, how are they holding on to stuff and climbing up everything? And they've got two little hooks and they climb up, okay? Now, why are we here today? Well, this very important and smart guy by the name of Albert Einstein 
once said, if bees disappeared, we would disappear. Now, why would we disappear from the earth if bees disappeared? That's right. It's exactly right. Because when the bees are looking for the pollen and the nectar on the flowers, they're pollinating the flowers, which is making more flowers and more fruits and vegetables. But that's really hard for me to understand. So some of the next photographs I want to show you um, some of the fruits and vegetables that you eat every day that bees pollinate. So without the bees, you wouldn't have cherries, you wouldn't have almonds, avocados, blueberries, some of my favorite fruits and vegetables. Now, what would that look like when you go to the grocery store? Let's just say for a second there were no bees, right? This is what the grocery store looks like right now. That's what it would look like if there were no bees. Not many fruits and vegetables. Yeah? Well, I'm not sure exactly what that is. <laughs> yeah. All right? So everybody says local honey is good for you. Why would they say local honey is good for you? Does anybody have any sinus problems in the spring, the allergies and stuff? When you're in, when, in the spring when the flowers and everything is blooming, the pollen is in the air and it goes into your nasal cavities and it's an irritant. But when we actually eat the pollen, it goes into our digestive system and our digestive system can actually handle it and we build up antibodies to the pollen. So some people say that by actually ingesting local pollen with honey, it helps with your sinuses. That's one of the reasons why I got into beekeeping. All right. All right, I thought I'd show you some beautiful photograph of some Louisiana hives, except those Louisiana hives are not in Louisiana right now. That's actually in California, and they're doing an almond pollination. So a lot of our Louisiana bees get put on trucks and move to California for about 45 days to pollinate all the almond trees in California. Thought that was kind of interesting, right? Ooh, lights went out. Um, we, no lights or lights? Better? A little bit better. Okay. Yeah, leave it off for right now. Good. All right. In a few minutes, one of my favorite bees is going to arrive here. All right. So, um, but in the meantime, I thought I'd talk briefly about how I got into beekeeping. Because I was traveling one time in Geneva doing a presentation at the United Nations, and my wife, texted me and we had triplets young kids at the house and she texted me and she said there's bees in the house and so there was a swarm of bees looking for a new home and she texted me and I texted her back and said look there's not much I can do because I'm overseas can you find someone to help take care of the bees so that was one of the reasons why I got into beekeeping is because they were looking at my house as the next home now I happen to live right down the street on Goodwood Park and there's a lot of big, beautiful oak trees, a lot of cavern, I mean, uh, uh, you know, holes in the oak trees. And that's where they would normally um, take up residence and build their hive. But unfortunately, they ended up in my house one time. So a lot of what I do is when people have bees in their house, I can go actually rescue them and relocate them into a better place. So I have bee rescue yards all over Baton Rouge. You've heard of a dog shelter doing dog rescues and cat rescues. I actually do bee rescues. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's right. That was probably me one time. <laughs> All right, so I thought I'd show you what bees do when they're actually looking for a new home. It's called swarming. And most people get, because they're scared of bees, they see bees flying around and they think it's kind of dangerous. But I took some videos of this bee swarm because in a minute, we're going to actually do our own little swarm all the way out the door into the garden. All right, everybody with me on that? So I wanted to show you what the bees are doing. And what they're doing is they're flying around. There's a queen in there somewhere and she's going to land on a tree, okay? Let me show you another photograph. And that's the bees in slow motion. See them flying? 
Now you shouldn't be worried about it when you see bees. You just keep your distance. You shouldn't be afraid of them, but make sure you keep your distance and then they'll do their thing, right? Uh, and this next photograph is me in the middle of the swarm. Because they're not defending anything, they're looking for a new home, and I'm gonna, I, was look, I was gonna give them a new home. See how they're not attacking me? All right. So this is the, what it looked like when they landed. And that's the two ladies that called me. And then I'm going to relocate them. And then I thought I'd show you some other photographs. Um, you notice that that flower is yellow. That flower is white. White. That flower is blue with yellow pollen. Okay. I'm just flipping through these because I'm getting to the point here. Notice that orange pollen on their legs. That's actually what it looks like on their legs when I collect it. And that's what it looks like in the colony after they've stored it. Okay? You see that? That's what it looks like whenever, whenever I cut it. You see the layers of the flowers? And that's what it looks like as honey, right? You notice the different colors of the honey? And, you know... I like different flavors, and not every honey is created equally. So if you've tasted honey, you should try some other local honeys because they all taste a little bit different. They're all sweet, but they all have a different flavor and a different thing. What we're going to do in just a few minutes is we're going to go outside and look at the flowers and look for the bees on it, and then we're going to do a honey tasting. I brought three different types of honeys for you to taste, and I want you to see if you can taste the difference. Okay? But I want you to remember when you're tasting what you think you're tasting. It could be very light and floral. It could be dark and kind of almost like a woody flavor, like a wine. So there's lots of different flavors to honey. Um, this, everyone says, I want to, I want, what does a queen look like? These are some of my queens. And you notice they're all different colors, you know? And then everybody said, what does an egg look like? So I know some of you probably have chickens, and the chickens sit on the egg and incubate it. The bees do basically the same thing. They, the queen lays the egg in the cell, and the bees put their little underbellies on it, and it radiates heat just like a chicken would, and the little egg grows into little larva and the little baby bee. All right? Okay. Lauren is, um, is my favorite bee available outside. Okay. Um, I asked my favorite bee to go forage outside, so she's going to tell us. Remember I said bees can't talk, they, they actually communicate non-verbally, and they communicate by smells. So Buzzy is going to come inside and communicate to us, without talking, where the flowers are and where the bees and the butterflies and the pollinator garden is. Is everybody ready for that? Is she outside? Okay, where is she? All right. While she's doing that, I'll, um, this is a swarm. This is a young couple we caught a swarm with. Oh, there's Buzzy outside, see? See? There's Lauren, my daughter, and Buzzy foraging. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can't bring her inside. You notice the clovers out there? Everybody has clovers in their, in their grass, right? Well, the bees are foraging on the clovers as one of the nectar sources and one of the pollen sources, right? So let's, let's see if we can't buzz you, get Buzzy to come in. Okay. We actually don't shake hands with bees, all right? When bees meet each other, they're not shaking hands. They actually rub antennas. So when Buzzy comes in, I'm going to say hello by rubbing antennas with her, okay? That's the first little lesson, all right? And then, come on in, Buzzy. Hi, Buzzy. Isn't Buzzy cute? So when bees meet, she just walked into the hive. Since I don't have antennas, I'm just going to rub her antennas because that's how they say hello, okay? So come on in, Buzzy. 
And I know you've been foraging out there, and we want to see some flowers and some real live bees, okay? So what, would you show us where the flowers are? All right? So this is the bee dance. What the bees do when they foraging in the, on the uh, flowers, they come back to the hive, and on the comb, they will literally do a dance. And the direction of the dance when the bee comes out of the hive is the direction from the sun. Whoop. From the sun. Did I lose? I lost audio. Was it still there? Okay. The direction that she's dancing is the direction the flowers are in. So she's, when we walk out of the building, the flowers are over that direction. The distance she's going to dance is how far they are. And then how quickly she's waggling her tail is how excited she is and the volume of pollen and nectar that's out there. Did anybody know that bees actually do a dance to communicate where the flowers and pollen is? See, I knew we had some smart people in the room here. That's fantastic. So Buzzy's going to show us where the flowers are, all right? All right. Let me, uh, let me show you a couple more slides. So Buzzy, you're going to lead us in just a second. Um, oop, went the wrong direction. I want them to see a few more photographs of the bees. Um, we have some bee suits. So if you want to get dressed up and put a bee suit on or a veil, you're more than welcome. And then we have some bee hats. So if you want to get a photograph with Buzzy out in the garden, I promise you everybody will have a chance to get a photograph with Buzzy in the garden with a bee veil on if you want. All right? I think that's kind of cool. Most people have never put bee equipment on. And then outside of this event, we're going to learn where the flowers are. You have the sheets. I want you to do your own little discovery out there. And the moms and the parents that are here, if you want to plant some of these plants, the list and the names are down below. And we have six or eight amazing, um, I would say, people that really enjoy planting things, and they've spent hours and hours and hours, and I would say we have one of the most beautiful gardens right here in Baton Rouge, right outside the library. And I really want you to take advantage of this, because Buzzy's going to be showing us some of the plants that the bees are very interested in, but you can very easily go plant these at your house. And so this is your roadmap, or your, your scavenger hunt, essentially. And Buzzy and our other beekeepers are going to show us where those plants are, and Mary, and the rest of her organization and the fine gentlemen in the back and ladies in the back are going to personally show you which plants are out there. And there's even a sensory garden in the back, which blew me away when I first saw it because you can actually pull some mint leaves. Who likes mint? Mint, got bubble gum? You can actually pull some mint and smell the mint and taste the mint out there. So when we get out there at the last garden, we're going to do some tasting of some leaves and smelling of some leaves. And then I brought my favorite box here. And in this box is all the honeys, okay? So everybody will get a photograph if you want it. It's gonna be a little warm outside, but let's go have some fun, all right? And Buzzy, let's everybody have a little swarm. Well, let's stand up, grab your papers, and we're gonna move to the outside, all right? And Cindy, I'm so sorry. I'm trying to remember everybody's name here. Like I said, we have some of the best yeah. people can, can you, out here to help you identify the plan. So I wanted to turn it over to John. And John's going to give us a little brief introduction. We have our maps with us. So go ahead, John. Okay. Uh, you talking to your thing right yes, there? Yes. All right. Uh, we want to thank. We want to thank Kevin so much for doing this uh, great bee program for us and, and the great ask that we have uh, here in the Baton Rouge Botanic Garden is the wonderful Butterfly Garden. And the Butterfly Garden is maintained by the Baton Rouge Garden Club, 
uh, which has a facility here on the property that's right behind me. And uh, we have great volunteers from the Garden Club who come out here every pretty much Wednesday morning, wouldn't you say, Cindy? Yes. Yeah, Wednesday morning. So if you want to learn about uh, what what uh, plants are here and how to maintain a butterfly garden, then I'm sure you could talk with uh, Cindy Atkinson, who leads uh, that group of butter butterfly garden uh, volunteers. So uh, just wanted to say thank you to the Garden Club and turn it back over to Kevin. So. Um, their their team is going to help us with the flowers, but remember, remember I showed you the photographs of Buzzy, or should say the bees flying around. I want you to notice that we're going to talk about this one. John, come, come back over here. Yes, sir. Since we're in this first the station, I'm looking at bees flying around. I just want everybody else to know. What kind of flower is this? Black eyed Oh, I want everybody to look over here, and I want you to see the bees flying around. You can also on the back legs. There's a lot of butterflies, a lot of bees, a lot of dragonflies, even some wasps will fly around. But if you notice really carefully, you see them hopping from flower to flower. You see that bumblebee over there on the big flowers? And I just saw some some honeybees flying around. Over there on that side. You see this one right here. You see, she's flying around. You can actually see the little yellow pollen on her back legs. Yes, see that? So that's clasping cone flower, correct? Yep. Clasping cone flower. So on your map, what we're doing is we are starting right here in the beginning and we're walking through the pollinator garden. So for the parents that are here, if your kids are interested in this particular flower, you can mark that, go home and plant that, okay? Now, when we get to the honey tasting, I'm going to ask every, every kid what their favorite flower is. So that's the password to do the honey tasting, right? So I want you to remember at least one of your favorite flowers, all right? Okay? So Mary and John, would you, uh, what's over on the other side here? Let's go to the next section. The other side. Everybody see the little dragonfly flying around? <laughs> White Dora. 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 You see the bees flying around it? I can't. You can't see. Why don't you come up close, all right? You know, when you go to the zoo and you look at the rhino, the rhino is pretty big. But in this case, little tiny little insects, right? John, you want to describe some of the other plants and flowers that are uh, Cindy, let's Cindy? see. Uh, this Cindy. is Gara. Uh, again, clasping cone flower. This is the purple cone flower. Uh, Cindy, what is the uh, the uh, purple? I need, yeah. I actually need the, a garden club person to come help me identify, but I can recognize the, the purple cone flower down here. Here comes uh, Marianne. Marianne is familiar with all of these. There's milkweed. And then there's five the flowers are all here. Yeah, I'm like, what is it? Let's keep moving. We'll keep everybody. I 
So who hasn't who has not seen a bee or a butterfly? Does anybody not see a bee or a butterfly? Yeah, Buzzy, Buzzy, getting some pollen to bring back to the hive. Right. Okay. Get the mic from them and give it to Kevin. Can everyone hear me? Oh, there we go. Never mind. All right. This is Kevin. He's an LSU student. He's an LSU nutritionist major, and he's also a beekeeper. So Kevin and I go beekeeping a lot. So Kevin, go ahead. All right. So um. Like he said earlier, this is the butterfly ball. And as the name suggests, they attract a lot of butterflies of all kinds. It's very pretty. And other pollinators too, such as dragonflies, honeybees, um, bumblebees, carpenter bees, a whole bunch of stuff. Right above you guys, the stuff with the pinkish, orangey color on it, those are called coral honeysuckles. And those are also great for attracting pollinators. They do need support and trellising. So when you do grow those, you will like to grow them on a fence or something that. And those are also unlike the Japanese honeysuckle, which is very good for your medicinal. These are native to our area right here. Um, here oh, right over here, Halloween, is actually one of my favorite plants. It's called zinnias. Any of them in all different colors and shapes. So they have some over here that are like this. They have some very big ones. They have red ones, yellow ones, pink ones, white ones. And what zinnias do are they're great for attracting pollinators, but they're also great as cut flowers, which you will cut and put in a little nice bouquet or a vase or something like that. And as you can see, Buzzy really loves zinnias. Um, right here is a low plot tree. Make delicious fruit. Also great for pollinators and stuff like that. And yeah. Take that. Great. Great. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, after this, you guys can follow Buggy to the sensory garden, where you guys will be able to pick and taste and smell some of the wonderful herbs. Who wants to taste and smell some more stuff? Follow Buggy. Let's go.